All right, here we are again, week number three. Uh, we've actually had some really exciting internet traffic. Um, we actually got an email from the Army, uh, Lessons Learned Branch, uh, which was kind of fun. They really liked what we were doing. Um, and we got a request from Iceland in uh, to uh, what, how would Anjing Banfa morph itself into fighting in the snow. And well, we have fought in the snow. Um, and unfortunately, we are here in California. It's only 58 degrees, although I put my snow gear on in hopes that it would snow today, but it's not going to snow for us. So we'll talk about it, and then maybe later on we'll get a chance to take a little field trip to the snow and play in the snow one, one weekend or something. Um, un, not unlike, there's an Indian martial art called Kali Parrot. Uh, Kali Parrot has a southern school and a northern school. Northern school stances are very narrow. And it's because they fight amongst the rocks, so they hop amongst the rocks and, you know, there's not much ground. Southern school, it's very swampy, very muddy, and they, they are in a very wide stance. Ninjutsu, very similar thing. Very wide stance most of the time, that's because they wanted to silhouette their opponent against the sky, but also because of them having to fight in snow and ice. One of the things that the, the, the ninja used to do was actually break off icicles and put them in the snow uh, especially on an S-curved path, they would continue to run the path. The samurai would run through the snow and step right on the icicles, just like punji sticks in, in Vietnam, for those in Vietnam. So improvised weapons also popped up on the internet tonight, but uh, today. But um, back to the snow thing, there's a several things about the snow you want to do is keep a wider stance. It helps you with your stability. Once you get a hold of your opponent, wrap your legs around them so they can't move and go away from you. We fight in roll around chairs. First thing you learn about is roll around chairs is to grab the chair with your hook, your foot. Keeps your opponent in there tight for you to be able to work on. So that's kind of what we can talk about on the snow, I think. Um, weight uh, uh, differentials and slope differentials are real important in fighting in the snow. Today we're gonna fight on the hillside. Then you're gonna learn about hillside fighting and what that's all about and how, like Patton would say, grab him in the nose, kick him in the ass, He's really talking about engage him and flank him motion, and we're going to do the same thing on the hill. For the army guys watching, you all think that fighting, you know, the, taking the top of the hill is the preferred position, but you're going to learn it's really the other way around. It's easier to fight uphill than it is to fight downhill. And it doesn't sound intuitive, but you'll understand why very quickly on some of the rules in fighting. And then finally, the rest of today, we're going to do two other things. Weapons laws and their disarms, just to, to highlight the weapons laws. And then if any time remains, we're going to go all the way back to white belt and learn three techniques if we get a chance to. All right. One of the um, uh, emails that we will talk about um, that came through was asking about improvised weaponry. So we're going to have a little bit of, of time on improvised weaponry. But in particular, what could you do on an airplane? Okay. Well, I have here besides my defender on an airplane, um, a, um, a uh, choke cord here somewhere along the way here. And um, with my choke cord, which should never be tied up like this, this could be shoestrings, obviously. Uh, you can choke, may I borrow you for a second? Turn around, choke cord use. Obviously you can take people out, choke them up, keep them tight, okay? You can do it from the front as well if you need to. It's not as clean or as nice about it, but you can do it very easily. Okay, get their head turned a little bit. More importantly, let me back up now. Everybody's got a set of keys. This is gonna really hurt. I'm taking my more sensitive parts off my keys here. I don't need to ruin the Hummer's uh, opening and door closing mechanism. Um, would you get a, a, a gun from Carrie Sensei, please? All right. A, a universal, wonderful bludgeoning device. Here's a weapon, you know. Oh, yeah. Now, can you describe that? Come over here. Like, that really changed this whole color. Can you describe what that felt like? You didn't even want to touch the gun anymore. <laughs> okay, grab it again. I'll do a little nicer. The, um, <laughs> that was a direct strike. What you can do, if you have enough, uh, enough curl or enough, enough cord, is now, once it goes around them, it makes it for a very nice ability to, to move and attack that weapon. 
in a number of different ways until your keys come apart, okay? But you can see what that does for you, right? Okay, makes it for a nice way to be able to attack that weapon. Um, and so, basically, I don't want to lose my keys. Basically, what you want to do is from a point like that, it also works around the, the neck so you can get a hold of these things nicely. But imagine this going into the face. If he had a weapon, you can continue to strike at the weapon, okay, to keep him away. If, in fact, he had a knife, go ahead and get a knife. You'd like to just use the choke cord version, but you can, you know, continue to strike at this person, okay? He won't even see this coming at him, okay? Very nice tool. And if you really want to get nasty about things, here, Simon, hold that. You add more weight. Now you got a carabiner, okay? Now, and you don't have a cup on either, do you? Yeah. You can literally fling this thing at them if you wanted to and hit them in the sensitive areas, and that would give you the opportunity to get moving on them, okay? Um, very easy thing to do um, is to head directly into the groin, uh, or you can see I'm kind of cutting a plane between him and me that, that has an ability to stop things. The other thing that's rather interesting to do is that if he came up close, Okay, and all I did was coil this up in my hands. If it had been a chain, it would have fit nicely, but I'm here, so I'm fighting. Okay, I'm holding on to it. I don't want to let go and hurt him, but you can literally pitch this directly into his face, giving him a chance to, um, to think about that. Okay, so with, does everybody have a choke cord yet? Darn, you guys all come to the line without a choke cord? What's that? I guess we're going to have to do an equipment check. Carrie Sensei has got a choke cord. We're going to have to do an equipment check here on the line starting out pretty soon, but hey, <clears throat> I don't have a defender now either. Simon's got my defender, so. All right, so we're going to get our choke cords made here really quickly and some keys out, and we're going to practice that right now. Okay, so we have, uh, everybody has a choke cord now. Some of the diameters of the choke cords that we've got are really um, uh, smaller diameters, which really do uh, attack you, and Barney can attest to that, the difference between my um, 550 cord choke cord and uh, his um, one we found off my equipment out here that's a much smaller diameter as you can kind of see it, it has a, and also a little rougher too so but just think about the flexible saws you get at the camping store hmm they actually have little rings at the end too uh, there you go uh, so remember the way that we attach our choke cords to our fingers is we bring the knot up like so and we hook it like so okay and that way also with this little bludgeoning device as we are bludgeoning people or whatever if I need to fight I just flex my fingers and off it goes I wasn't sure where that was gonna go thank you Simon okay so um, very important the attachment method so let's look at the dummy over here and I'm not talking about Simon he's way too big for me to call him a dummy okay when you're going to practice this, you can easily come up and practice. And you see, I just knocked off a chunk of wood. So you can practice both sides hitting, you know, on, on wood, okay, to play with that, all right? The other thing, obviously, is to keep this in your hand. You're fighting, you know, throw it out there, okay? So you can practice that a little bit and not on each other. So, Simon, there you go. And that's how you do that, and we'll give them little space here to practice. So let's get in a line and try a couple of hits and then move to the back of the line. Back up a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's talk one other thing, if I can borrow yours again. Uh, if you're going to face, and Barney brought up a good point here, he didn't know it. If you're going to face somebody, you can clearly hold it like this. So it's in the front and you can smash out and, and hit them very quickly and they don't know what's back there. It's just, please don't hurt me. And then it's just right out there. They don't even see it. I'll do it for the camera without hitting my new camera actually. You know, you're right there. That was two hits. Plus you can bring it back, okay? 
So the only bad thing is your hands back here instead of out here, but you could start it out here as well if you wanted. But coming from here and moving out with all that motion really picks up a lot of speed for you. And you can get very good at that. So give that a try too, Bart. Yeah, see how nice that was? It just comes right out of the throat. It's kind of like our quick draw. Just like our quick draw. It just comes right out of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he hit the guy over there. I love that, Simon. That was excellent. Thank you. You know, now Simon did a very positive thing because what he did was he knew he had multiple attackers and he let that guy think about what he had to go deal with. Very good, Simon. That thing just shot out of my hand when I opened my <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's out of there. Yeah, it's gone. Had chunks of wood coming off the target now. It was so good that that piece came off to hit the other person. It was very, very expertly done, mind you. So that's the answer the mail on our internet uh, par portion. The other thing we're going to do is improvise weapons because it kind of spawned the whole idea. So we're going to go get a bag. Um, Simon, there's a bag over on the table. Would you get that for me, please? Now, based on what we've learned with the defender, we should have a defender moment here somewhere along the way. When you learn how to use a defender well, you are the weapon. So anything that comes in your hands is the weapon. Now these are just merely, it was just Thanksgiving yesterday or the day before, implements from the kitchen that we're going to go play with here, like defenders. Seasonal nutcracker garlic uh, press. Jar opener. Mmm. Love that with the ridges. Mmm. Good stuff. Okay. Barbecue hot dog thing, you know. Mmm. Love that. You could probably get on an airplane with that, I would think. Last but not least. Okay. So we're going to go through each one of these, and Damien is going to be my opponent. And uh, Barney, that's with a B. Everybody keeps thinking that Barney is with a Varney, and it's not. Barney, would you hold that and give me the first implement of destruction, please? And Ah. All right. <laughs> the worst one there is, uh, kind of, sort of. First off, this also comes apart, so you can throw it at him, distract him. Um, which is the same thing with your wallet, if you have to give up your wallet. Anybody got a wallet on them? Yes. <clears throat> oh, no, wallet. wallet. Oh, well, no, wallet will work. Okay. So let's talk about what one might do with this particular device. This has got very few uh, nice edges to it. May I borrow your wallet for a second? Huh? No, what happens is if he's going to come ask for my wallet, all I'm going to do is pull it out and throw the wallet, and he, his eyes will naturally track that wallet, okay? Or if he wants to now pick it up because I'm so sorry that, or go ahead and pick it up, i got this thing in my hand, you know, ouch, okay? This has got a little weight to it. I'll give Simon's wallet back. We should have actually, good on Jing Bonfoss would have grappled through that, taken out the money. So you get a grab, okay? It's got a little bit of weight to it. That bone is so nice to work with, huh? Okay. Uh, choke. Okay. Okay. Come on back. Since it has a nice flat spot. Oh yeah. Nice flat spot. Mm -hmm. How'd that feel? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Great. First one to play with. Give me another one. This has got to be my most favorite walk around weapon. This thing here is a simple walk spatula. Okay. So, choke again. I mean, this thing hurts, and that's the flat side. Okay, I'll do it easy, but this edge is just powerful as heck, is it not? Yeah. Grab a hand. You've got all of those. Grab it the other. Grab the other hand so they can see. Same thing with the defender. In it goes. Does that feel good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And you don't have a cup on, darn it. Yeah. Simon, you have a cup on, right? So Simon comes to choke me, you can take this or a flat edge 
and really send it in there. You can feel what that's like, right? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, last but not least, from our punches last week, right? I can also come in, turn those off. I actually hooked part of his ring on that one. That was good. <laughs> so I meant implement of destruction. Okay, you're back in. And the next one, please. How well have you ever been trashed out by standard? Oh. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, this is good. Okay. I'll uh, use the less obvious end. How about that? Okay. So notice how it fits very nicely, almost concealed in my in my hand. Uh, let's come do two hand grab or something. Okay. I love two hand grabs because you can choke them right in the neck. Okay. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Two hand grab again. I'll be very gentle. Oh God. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> now, of course, we've got the nice hitting device. Ripping device, okay? So, uh, another grab. Well, let's go after, reverse that grab so they can see the fingers, okay? I'm gonna be very gentle because these are kind of prickly paired things, right? Then that real, that's just barely applying any pressure at all, steadying up with my thumb. Okay. Notice the tongs up the nose, right into the septum, make a turn. Be very nice. You could work in the ears as well, nice turn anywhere in the neck. I honestly believe you could rip tissue as well in nice turns like that. Choke, coming in and ripping that like so. Very easy. Did it bleed? I don't think so. Oh darn, okay. Now that would cause a very powerful psychic disincentive when his half of his flesh comes off his arm in a rip like that, kind of dangling out. You could also reach up and grab it and Depending upon the tensile strength of his tissue, you can control that arm. Next item. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's unique about some of these are obviously you, you can come in and get a hold of ears and twist ears very nicely, okay? Noses, chins, all that kind of good stuff. Um, you can smack very nicely because you have a little bit of kinetic energy behind it because and a very small area, surface area. So these things act the same way as a defender. Last but not least, you can hook fingers, okay? And use this as a defender. May I borrow a finger? If you can hook a finger, you can use it just like a defender, as you can see, the power in that, because I've got so much leverage hanging out there. You can pinch them over here, give them something to think about, okay? Oh yeah. That's a good thing. Standard hot dog. What might be next in our bag of tricks over there? And these were picked randomly, by the way. Oh, the, the garlic press. Well, need we talk about that? <laughs> I meant one thing that is interesting that may not be obvious with something like this, come from this grab, is you can, if you can get in on a wrist at all, you can get some really nice pressures on both sides of that wrist. Here, can we get a look at your face when we do that? Okay, this is not a fake face, okay? Hardly any pressure at all, but it turns out a very nice tool. Now, you can imagine if, if you can hook fingers or thumbs into that, what kind of pressures you would have off of that, okay? From a very simple tool, all right? You obviously have the ability to come in and attack kushu points, those soft areas of the, of the body. It can sit in your hand, go up noses, throats, come from a choke will be very easy into the throat, okay? Just like your own fingers, but back them up. Garlic press. Imagine a nose in that. Okay, what, what other implement of destruction might we have there? Oh, the bottle cap. Now, you might have seen, you could probably take that almost anywhere you wanted. Got a nice hooking piece on it. <laughs> Poor Damien. Obviously, you can still do the same kinds of things. You've got a little bit of an edge, but, but look at that nice edge I've got to work with. I mean, I put it right in there, put this little hook piece in there, and brought him right down to his knees. How nice is that, okay? Very easy. It's got a bit of an edge, so you can still catch an ear, a nose in between the little edge here, okay? Very nice. 
that's obvious. Now this is interesting. Hmm. You could, if you very carefully take a hold of the middle. No, the, with two, your whole hand. He's got me, literally both fingers, locked up. I can't get out of this thing. That's a very interesting way to take a, a prisoner if you needed to. Okay, thank you. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, if you actually could subdue somebody and you needed to go ahead and get a hold of them, that might be a very interesting tool to do so. A little less known, come from a choke. Nose. Okay. News, right? Very easy to do, right? Okay. Oh, last oh, but not least. oh, yeah. Last but not least, your standard can opener with food left on it, even. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> From a cross hand grab, you still have all the same. You have all the same abilities, a little larger, but notice, yeah. Okay, very nice tool from that standpoint. I've got a nice little edge going on here because it's got a little nib nibbles into there. Yeah, how, was, how good was that? Might have even had it. You can see the marks on his arm. Very nice. Again, imagine you can capture thumbs, fingers, all of that stuff. I'll be really gentle. But you know, yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. The other parts, you've got edges that you can come into and work. So last but not least, uh, you've got a nice ridge here to smack with, okay, and it really hurt, or rub, or break hands, or hit elbows, any of the bony protrusions, nice edge. So without any further ado, we're going to turn these over to our students and let them have a little imaginary fun out there from anti-grab work. Uh, Simon's got a cup on. If you can come give me in a headlock, Simon. Okay, here you are. Okay. You can see how nicely that works, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. From a bludgeoning device standpoint. So without any further ado, let's have a little fun. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we all kind of had uh, uh, a fun time with our little new cooking implements now. It gives a whole new concept to, uh, to uh, our new combat chef, uh, Barney. And he's going to be all he was equipped now. He doesn't have to carry his M16 all the time. Next lesson's up the side of the hill, so uh, without any further ado, and cameraman will watch us go, we're going to open that gate and hike up the hill, and then the cameraman's got to switch off and come on up. So we'll see you at the top of the hill. Probably got that in the background. Slowly climbing out. Been doing that for a while. That one? Yeah. No. That's what they call a Cessna caravan. Usually carries people and luggage around. All right. Every Anjing Bonfoss has gloves. Part of our kit. Okay. All right. Here we're on a hillside. I'll let the cameraman pan up the hillside. I'm not sure what that slope is. It's probably 50 degrees, maybe 60. Okay, it's steep enough. All right, up the side of the hill. No, no, just him. Now, come on back to this way. Come on down. Right about, come on. Right about, keep coming. Right about there, okay? Now, notice, Damien is up the hill. I'm down the hill. If Damien were to come try to fight me, what does Damien have to use? Come on down. What he's got is he can't quite reach me because I'm down below him. Back up a little bit more because we're too close. He's going to have to use his feet. I don't have feet because I can't kick up that high. I've got to use my hands, right? So if you were to throw kicks at me, for example, we're here blocking, okay? All the time our normal blocking, but we can return to strike. Okay, his best advantage would be literally to sit on his butt, slide down and attempt to kick at me. Okay, but so you learn very quickly that if you're down the hill, you're not going to kick, you're going to use your hands only. If you're up the hill, you can't use your hands, you have to kick. 
So it immediately takes both of our weapons out of sync, okay, as warriors. The other thing then to do is as soon as he kicks at you, if you can get a hold of that, and like before, bring him down to you, lock that up, work. Now, just like what we were in, we talked about snow, I want to stay connected to him. Notice I've got a lock on his, I've got a nice natural lock going on on his ankle. I can come in, I can choke him if I want to. But notice how I used his ability to slide him down. Now, Patton said, grab him in the nose, kick him in the ass. And really what he was talking about in army terms is a frontal attack, but then you flank him. Well, we did a frontal attack and we flanked him by getting a hold of him and bringing him down the hill. Okay, now I'm back up the hill. Now, very quickly, if you go weapon to weapon, he's at a gross disadvantage now, isn't he? A gross disadvantage. So being up the hill isn't always your best advantage. We'll talk about when it can be, but that'll be the next time. So, guys, we'll pair up and we'll try this out, okay? All right, let's go see what how it happens. All right, so stay there. Barney, you're there. Simon, go up the hill. Carry since I get in there. Position. Okay, guy up the hill. Guy up the hill is going to be kicking at the guy down the hill. Guy down the hill is going to get their hands on that leg and drag him down. And, nope. Kick at his face, kick at his head. I don't care where it goes. Yes. Okay. Now see how hard it is to maintain that uphill position? Okay. Going back up. Try it again. See how, how easy that is, Barn? Now you wouldn't think of it, but... Found the crystal. Oh, good. <laughs> easy on the leg, easy on the leg, Kerry Sensei. Okay. That nice shirt's just going to get all torn up now. Look at that. I, I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even if you just play kick a little bit and you try to hold your position, see what that's like. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> come on back here, come on back. <laughs> big boy. Come see me. Come see me sometime. All right, let's switch roles and try that. The, it makes a whole difference. It, this is real world on Jing Bon Fa training. Pull. Let's scoot up a little bit. Scoot up the hill a little bit so you don't have the advantage of the. Uh, you got you got the same disadvantage he does. Scoot up the hill a little bit more. Okay. And then bring him down. Get a hold of that leg, foot, whatever you can, and drag him down the hill. Yep. You hooked that ankle. Let's get an ankle lock on that. Here, let me show you that. Yeah, let me show you that. You bring it up to your... Here, come on up a second. Barney's going to feel something really... If you bring it up to here, hook it right. You see that? That's what you want to do. So you get it up high on your bicep. Come take that over. Get it up high on your bicep. That's it. And your hyper extending. You can just like grab his, grab his belt with one leg. See how you're hyper extending that ankle now? Now, Kerry Sensei would probably transfer to a secondary weapon. Although, it looks like Simon's got his hands on one of them. Okay, Simon. Let me show you that ankle lock. Go back over. You want to catch this right on the upper part of your thigh. Okay, that's an ankle lock. Okay. May I try it? Please. Okay, there you go. Lean forward on it, just lean to use your body weight. Got you, Damien. Grab his, grab his groin. Damien, take your knife out and stab him. Take his knife out and stab him. I think you died, Damien. Barney with a V just killed Damien. 
Get that, no, uh, uh, there you go, all the way up on your... Okay. I think it is on the inside. Yeah. Barney, you're not being a very good uh, uki, learning how, helping your uki learn how to do this. And that is a good point. When you train, guys, the uki, who's your opponent, is supposed to allow you to learn the technique. And then once they learn the technique, then you can mess around. I'd have pushed him forward then at that point. So I don't like that snow thing. Get a hold of him then. Oh, yeah. That was good. Carrie didn't say you okay on that one? Yeah, Ooh. yeah I think he folded me backwards. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> don't kill the cameraman, please. The next master of Anjing Ban Fa, please don't kill him. I, I'm going to learn uh, back brace technique. <laughs> oh. Did you hyper send your back? Yeah. That's right. You okay? All right. Is everybody ready to go on to our next lesson now? I'll tell you what, that's not a bad idea. Let's switch, uh, let's switch roles here. Uh, Simon, go up the hill. Simon, go up the hill. Barney, you're down the hill. Carry back on the camera for a few minutes, please. And uh, let's watch the big boys here for a second. What if I lunge at them? That's, a, that's, that's next week's technique. And all he has to do is move out of the way, right? That's correct. He's going he's gonna to take you down the worst way possible. Or fold up underneath you and let you go over the top. I might as well, we just had the last, next week's lesson. Uh, question from Simon was, what if he lunges at him? That's fine. That is a strategy for the top guy, is to use his momentum, get his, like a big kite, as much area as possible to snag the guy down below. Now, that being said, the guy down below has either got to get underneath him and let him go over the top, or get a part of that kite and make a spin on his base, which then takes the top guy with all his momentum down the hill out of control. Okay, there you go. But keep playing. Barney's liking the transition to secondary weapons of the other opponent's kind. Now, that's like close encounters of the worst kind, right? <laughs> now blood would spurt all over the place with that one as well and cause a powerful psychic disincentive. Get our powerful psychic disincentive call in here. Now, Barney. Barney. That's Barney. I love, uh, can you get a shot of the underwear? <laughs> okay. Barney, try to capture the foot and drag him offline. You're kind of like charging him. The technique is to get a hold of a foot and pull him off balance. Okay, so we'll use technique, not our body weight. All right, Damien, why don't you go up the hill and kick it, Barney? Okay, so focus on the block of the kick and getting a hold of it. If you miss it, wait for the second one. Now we're talking. That's how you do that, okay? Thank you, Barney. All right, Barn, you come out, you go in, same kick. Simon is going to catch that kick and try not to kill poor Damien, the Polish assassin. assassin. Yeah, that's it. Okay, back again, try again. There you go. Use your body weight on that leg, not your muscle. Okay, good. All right. Then let's head back down the hill for our next lesson, shall we? Okay. All right, we're going to go through the weapons laws. Um, they're very similar for knife and gun. And we're going to do one knife disarm and one gun disarm using the four weapons laws. Um, this is a disabled pellet gun, but the slide, in fact, works. Okay. 
and it's it's really lightweight it's not the same weight as you would have with a real weapon which we prefer to train with something that has the same weight typically and if I can borrow Barney for a second okay point at me first weapons law with a gun you've got to close the distance you cannot be way out here and disarm that weapon and that weapons advantage is it shoots from far away so with the weapons in in gun you must close the distance your hands are up please don't shoot me okay the first thing you've got to do is clear the angle of attack of the weapon if he pulls the triggers go on that away okay second thing is I need to control the weapon in some particular fashion we're gonna do a disarm here I'm gonna control this weapon so it can't come back at me three I'm gonna go ahead and do a disarm four I neutralize the opponent I rack around and back up so he can't take it away okay and so I want to keep this and by the way in my backup notice my back foot is searching for the ground for the steady ground that I need to have I just don't step okay bang bang rack that round he may not have had one in the chamber at all so we'll review that one more time let's do it on this side I'm not really focusing on the disarm as much as I usually do one I've got to close the distance please don't shoot me okay I have to clear the angle of attack as number one number two I've got to control the weapon in some particular disarm whatever your art might be okay two three excuse me three I'm gonna disarm this weapon okay four I've got to neutralize my attacker and notice again how I'm scooting back trying to find my my space okay all the time weight is forward his back foot is searching for where I'm gonna be clear the angle of attack control the weapon disarm neutralize in all of that remembering to rack around make sure you have one if you don't you don't still makes a good defender you can bludgeon them you can hook their fingers in the in the trigger guard right if it's got a hammer you can get in soft tissue areas okay still a great tool right those are the four on gun let's go right to knife I want to open the distance on a knife I don't want to get that close to that knife because knife is a good weapon so I want to open the distance first I want to make him reach out with that blade okay one I'm clearing the angle of it excuse me one I'm clearing the angle of attack of the weapon I do not want this jamming this way as this is jamming towards my throat I've got to get out of the way Two, control the weapon three disarm that weapon like last week's lesson here's our thumb four neutralize the opponent now very simple we'll do it on the other side my hands are back I want to get him to stretch out there so he caught my mouth even but I've got it out of the way now I'm out of the way initial attack I'm going to control that weapon he might want to take that weapon back towards him in which case I want to follow that weapon back okay some cases you don't even need to disarm notice I stabbed him in the neck but I'm gonna go three make my disarm four neutralize now on that neutralization you're entering into the stomach using your body cut all the way down through the groin his intestines would fall out horrible smell so if you are gonna stab to the body cavity they have different smells and different feelings but he's not gonna go very far okay so those are the four weapons laws gun open the distance knife close the distance the rest pretty much stays the same I'm not hunting with my leg on the knife version because I like to stay close all right so let's pair up and get that a little students here in the class. Back it up, Barney. Notice that foot. You see that foot, Barney? Okay, see how he's looking back there? Not just stepping. Okay.
Take that round, back that baby up. Um, let's talk safety. Uh, I know I'm crazy, but I like to use real weapons because real weapons is what the heaviness, the movement, you eject um, uh, cartridges, uh, eject magazines by accident. All of that actually happens on a real weapon. Uh, we are using a rubber one today. We used a disabled. Um, the one thing that we do talk about, we usually get a weapons officer who is trained if we have uh, multiple types of weapons um, and the weapons move from each group to each group. They're always checked by the weapons officer before they leave and when they get to the new group and the new group is always taught how to clear that, check it, everything so that nothing happens. Um, I like there's a lot of techniques you learn with wooden guns and stuff like that and you try to do it on a real weapon it's completely different um, so the closer you can get the real world the better I think that's my safety talk to a large extent is that answer the, man? the combat wrist throw and because we use it so much Dylan son mentioned it last week is constantly going to combat wrist throws which we can do uh, to disarm weapons but I want to go through the process of what a combat disarm uh, combat uh, wrist throw is Damien all right, like last week, like last week, we talked about the wrist being an elliptical joint, an ellipse. If you were to like put a, if your finger was a pencil, and you could draw the range of motion, you're actually drawing an ellipse, which is like a circle that gets squished. Um, we have to take it out of range of motion. The combat wrist drill starts like this. We come along parallel to this. We'd like to get our thumb on the backside and our fingers on the meat of the thumb. We're going to bring this up. I'm going to back it up with my back hand well, on this side. Here. What's going to happen is I'm going to actually start to either use my waist or if I'm in here, I'm going to start to use my body to turn this towards my back foot, causing a throw like so. Right? You okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, come on back up. We'll do that again. So if their hands are out or down or trying to get into your pocket or you, you can get parallel to that, see how nicely that is? Works out great for a pickpocket, right? You pick this up. Again, you're controlling here. I'm going to bring it back towards my back foot, I'm right here. And you can see how that is. I don't let the weight off either. Go ahead and lock him up. Put your foot on his face so he can't see what's going on. Okay, you can come in and get a two fingers and continue to hold that wrist lock in place. Okay, utilizing the power of the grip. See how he's up off the ground even? He ain't going, he's not going to go anywhere, but where I decide he wants to go. He can roll out of that if you flip that way. And I've got him still in a nice lock, right? Okay, and then I can split his fingers if I want to. All right, so we'll learn that next on Jing Bon Fa style. Thank you so much. Okay, let's give that a try. Yeah. There we are. Put it on his face, Simon. No, no, step on his face, Simon, please. Pin his head to the ground. That's the kind of control I want you to have. And of course, we never help an area of our opponents up because you fight like you train in the real world. That's exactly what you do. You reach down and help them up. Okay? Which is the wrong answer.
Step on his face, please. The other way. No, no, come across. Use your left leg and push it, push it, pin his face to the ground. Pin his whole face to the ground. There you go. Yeah, nice. Also, come on. No, don't ever help him up. Also, <laughs> go ahead and grab him again like you did. His hand was out. Okay. Now, watch this. See how you're moving that way? Mm -hmm. Don't move that way. Watch this. I'm going to take your place. So I'm here, right? I'm going to move him into me this way. Okay. It takes him right off balance because you're just you're dragging right off his base. Okay. Did, was that a little quicker? Carry Sensei? Yeah, and it's just like you're locked up and gone. So you grab him, bring him to you, and point almost the other direction, and there. Okay. Try that. Turn the yeah. There you go. We'll get your leg work fixed. Yes. Yes. Now Simon, nice. Let's do that again. But I want to show you something. Okay. When he. You were in here and you're pushing down. That works great. I'm going to turn this way and point towards that foot. Oh my God. Big difference, isn't it? Oh. Big difference, right? I was going small, slow speed. Oh yeah, good. Crompton. Okay. So, you know, your voice has gotten deeper, but your breath hasn't changed. <laughs> okay, so Simon, when you get a hold of this thing, oh. think of pointing. See how I turn my whole body? I left the hand right here. I'm looking that way. I'm going to point it to that foot. At the same time, I'm dragging him through, and you can see what happens. Okay? Yeah, move it to your front. Okay, go ahead and get a hold of him. I'm going to help you with the footwork. Okay, bring that up. Now, take this back foot and step back towards me a little bit. Okay, now, look at me. Turn your body. Put your hand to your foot. <laughs> Big difference, <laughs> huh? Big difference. That's how you do that, Simon. And you know, it's a little bastard in the back that's going to get you when you're locked up with this guy, right? And so you're turning around facing him right away. Matter of fact, you're throwing him into the mix. Okay. Very important point, too. Carrie, since you started out over there, he ended up over here. It's a little bastard behind you that would get you, and now you put him in the mix of the fight, too. Very good. Okay. Thing. I'm fine. You just grab my fingers. Yeah, I just, I just come in here like this. You just grab them in that way. Okay. Okay. You use them just to twist up. Okay. You could split them I, too I if was, you wanted to. Yeah, okay. I was doing that and that wasn't being as effective. As you I can, wanted. you can split them. I heard that one pop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Sir. Like pushing. Most are pushing. Push. They push it. They come up and get a grab. Watch yeah. the mic. You can come up and get a grab, okay, and you pick it right off of there. Okay, yeah. there's your throw. Okay, oh, it's a. What did you do? Yeah, I Okay. I'll see you. Yeah, so it's pretty familiar that I close that when you come up. Exactly. That's what exactly. Right? Hey, or they're pointing at you, yeah. right? Look at that hand, it's just hanging out for you to get a hold of, isn't it? Yeah. You got it. So you're going to go down or take them down? What? Yeah, always take them down. And then rotate your bod. Yep. Now hold the knife out and do the same dis do the same throw and disarm. Okay. Do the same thing. This is identical. Except it don't let go of the weapon. No, no, yeah. Yeah, same thing. No, the other way. Just go back to the grab. Step back with your left. Step back with your left. Oh, you can do that too. You just need to step back with your left. Barney, you should transition your secondary weapon, cut him up. Okay, let's get on the camera. All right, let's get toes on the line. We'll find out what we learned. What did you learn that you liked? Oh, fighting. That was pretty cool. Yeah, what'd you like about the hill fighting? Uh, when you're down, you can just like grab the guy's leg if he kicks and pull him and he flies. Right. And then you just pin him down to the ground and have your way with him. There you go. 
Barney, what did you learn you like today? Definitely hill fighting. Hill fighting? That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and what did you like about it? Well, I liked about it uh, that I not only do you lose, uh, everybody thinks that the higher ground is a better place, but, mm -hmm. but in reality, when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, you're in a better place on the ground because you use the guy's weight and gravity against him. Exactly. Then, then you could use your secondary weapons and... Now think of staircases. Be a sushi chef. Staircase, right? Yeah. Isn't that isn't that an uphill fight and a downhill fight? Staircase, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can even think of couches. And you're on the ground, you got thrown to the ground, the guys are sitting on the couch or above you. Well, the same principles will, will, will continue to interlace all those same principles are good. And Simon, what did you learn you liked? I like the, also the hillside training, but, mm -hmm. and then, but I can't touch enough on uh, the universal law of escapes. Right. I always can't get enough practice on that. Right. And uh, Weapons laws, you like weapons those? Weapons laws, those are, those are always great because yeah. those are things you really got to keep oh. in the back burner all the time. Cause right. Not Combat wrist roll goes right into those weapons yes, laws, as you saw that too. Oh, yes. It's yep. just, you can't get enough practice on that. Good, good. And... Kerry Sensei, what did you learn you liked? I always like to focus on the improvised weapons because it gets us to stop thinking that this is a gun technique or a knife technique mm -hmm. and focus on what's the real mechanics of it, how mm -hmm. we can apply it anywhere. Yeah, those are really powerful techniques. You know, those, those things are great. And uh, I think that's uh, how we do that. And Simon? And that's what Simon says. That's what Simon says, and that's how we do that. We'll see you next week.